Greetings and welcome back to part four of building a cutscene. So let's go ahead and just keep on building this step by step. And as we get to something interesting, I will take a moment to talk about it because this is the bulk of it and we're doing a great job so far. So let's go ahead and keep on, keep on going. So now we want to move Sarah up because if you remember from the original cutscene, she, she moves up, goes back and casts an electric spell at him. And that's where the quick time event is. So maybe we'll get to that here. So we're gonna destroy the dialog box as usual. Don't wanna keep that up. We're gonna say if her Y coordinate doesn't equal 590 inside this room, uh, she needs to get back up to right about here, which is 592. 590 works as well. I know that from experience. So if she doesn't equal there, then her sprite index will equal SPR Sarah walk up. You gotta give her image speed again since she was not animating during the text box. And we're gonna say minus minus obj Sarah dot y. Now that's important because she's going up and you can see the y coordinate in the bottom left corner there. When you go up, it needs to go down because zero zero starts right here. So over here, is the entire size of the room. So you gotta remember when you need to go up and when you need to go down. Forgetting that, cause your player to do some strange things. So we'll say else plus plus current step. And then we'll say break. Okay, case seven, not case ampersand. Move back to the left. So if obj x doesn't equal 815, which again is like back over here. I want to move her in that direction. So obj Sarah dot sprite index equals SPR Sarah walk left. And then we want to minus minus obj Sarah dot x. And then we're going to, when she reaches that area, we're actually gonna do a couple of things. We're gonna say her image speed is equal to zero. Her sprite index is gonna be equal to walking right. And her image index is going to equal zero. Now the image index, if you remember, is, you know, uh, the sprites here. So if we say it equals zero, it's gonna be the starting one because she was moving. We don't know which one she was on. So we want her to end on zero so that you know she's standing still and she's ready to go. And then we're going to increase the current step and say break. I'll repeat it again. Don't forget breaks. It'll cause some weird issues. You'll probably know right away what happened because you forgot a break, but yeah. Okay, now, step eight is gonna be a little interesting. We're gonna use the counter now, or again, and we're also gonna start doing uh, some drawing here real soon. So if counter is equal to 100, um, then that means enough time has passed and we are going to do something. If it's not, then we're going to increase the counter. All right, so we are going to make her sprite index into wizard chanting and her image alpha is going to equal one and her image speed is going to equal 0.25. Now we are changing the image alpha because it's going to uh, kind of she's going to kind of fade in and then make it look kind of cool. And then we're also going to increase the current step and you must reset the counter to what you need it at for the next time you use it. I'm gonna be using it for zero again next time so that's what we need to do. Now let's go ahead and run this because anytime you type out a lot of code you want to be running your project to see if you encounter any errors. Let's go ahead and try this. Everything's working fine moves down, slap on the face, health goes down, good so far. Okay, so we're not moving, 
uh, I press delete and I can see that we are in step five. So we should be in a much higher step. So let's see what happened. In step five, I never increased the current step. So let's exit out of the game and figure out how step five should go. So there's a couple ways we can do it. We can either have the player press space to continue, or what I'm gonna do instead is put in an if statement here and say if counter is equal to 60, then we're gonna reset the counter and increase the current step. And otherwise, we're going to increase the counter. So this is something I forgot uh, even last time. So that's important to remember. And that delete allowed us to see where we were stopped and what we needed to fix. So that fixed case five. Now let's run it one more time and take a look at, we should get all the way to step eight. So I'm gonna press delete and we can watch the steps move onward. Okay. Alright, that looked good. She changed into that. That's perfect. And so to get her to fade out, we're going to go over and we are going to create a new event. We're going to add a draw event because we actually want to draw some things and change her transparency so it needs to be done in the draw event. Now, to make Sarah fade in and out correctly, what we're going to do is actually use another switch statement here, and we're going to say switch current step, because we're going to want to draw things depending on the case that is currently going on. And so if we go back to our step event, we can see that we are changing her sprite to the sprite wizard chanting, but we want to fade out her other character, her other sprite. So inside of here, we're going to say case 8, because we know that we're on case eight. So inside of here, we're gonna draw sprite ext spr sarah wizard chanting. We're gonna say zero for the sub image, and we're gonna say obj sarah.x, obj sarah.y, and the scale is just gonna be one and one. Rotation is going to be zero, so it'll be normal. I don't want to change the color, so C white is the default. And the alpha is going to change with the counter here. And we're going to say obj image alpha equals one divided by counter plus one, because we don't want to divide by zero. And we'll throw in the break. Doing that is going to make Sarah fade in and out, and it'll look really cool. So case nine, let's go ahead and jump onto that. We're going to create the attack here, so let me comment that. Um, with that being said, let's go over to objects and let's create the attack. So we're gonna say obj electric attack. We're gonna assign it that sprite. And what we need to do inside of here is just have the create event and give it an image speed of one because it has a couple of sprites that it can go through. And that's really all there is to it. It's a very simple thing. Um, I'm not putting, oh, apparently that didn't select properly. I'm not gonna put any code inside of here besides that because I wanna control everything inside of the cutscene treasure chest. I could put a collision in the, in the electric attack. There's things I could do. I'm not going to, again, I'm controlling everything inside of here, which makes debugging much easier later on. If anything goes wrong, I know exactly where to go. Okay, so if audio is not playing, which reminds me, let's make a sound. This one is gonna be called sound electricity. This is a sound effect I found online and it's really cool. Uh, it almost worked for what I needed to do. I had to change it a little bit. It's by Jeremy Sykes. So we're gonna open that up and I'm gonna put the volume down and play it uh, on repeat, of course. So it kind of sounds like an electric thing. I did a little bit of audio editing here using Audacity and came up with this and it works pretty well, I think. So back to the cutscene. So this is an audio that needs to loop, but if we don't have this if statement right here, uh, 
it will actually play the sound again and again and again. Like, it'll compound on itself, eventually becoming deafening because it keeps on playing again and again. It just gets louder. So we need to do this check to say, if the audio is not playing sound electricity, then we want to play that sound. Priority of one on a loop. And we also want to say, if the instance doesn't exist, obj electric attack. Again, without this check, this code is always running during case nine. So it, it, you know, it could go through hundreds of times during the step nine, it's 60 times a second, and it would create 60 unique electric attacks, which is not what I want to do. It might be what you want to do, not this, not this time for me though. So we're gonna say attack equals instance, create layer is gonna be at obj Sarah plus 10 and obj Sarah dot y in the objects layer, obj electric attack. And we're going to set the image alpha equal to zero at first because I want it to kind of fade in as well. And we're going to say down here, if counter is equal to 100, we're going to reset counter to zero and increase the current step. And then what I want to do is actually have the electric attack fade in. And we're going to do that by using the counter here as well. So we're going to increase the counter and we're going to say attack.imageAlpha is equal to counter divided by 100. So this will fade into existence, which will look really cool, I think. Now, one thing to note is that when you are doing these steps, if you want to just do something once, like setting the image alpha or create something, you have to have an if statement like this that checks to see if that thing has already been done. Now, you can use specific variables that you create to set to true or false booleans to do that, but you have to come up with some way, otherwise things will run again and again and again, which sometimes is not what you want. So when we are setting the image alpha, when we are setting the current step and things like that, it, I know it's only gonna run once, but you may come into problems where you're trying to do something you think should only run once or you want it to only run once and it runs a lot of times. So if that happens, check to see where it's at and if you have it encapsulated in an if statement. If not, you may be actually having that thing be done 60 times a second, which is probably not what you want. Now, let's do case 10. And uh, this is where we are actually going to do the QuickTime event. So, we are gonna say, with attack, and if you're not familiar with the keyword with, it allows us to go inside of the objects that we go in with, 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 a lot of widths <laughs> and access its variables directly but it also allows us to call functions for that uh, instance to do which we are going to do so we're going to say obj sarah dot sprite index equals spr sarah wizard casting so we're going to change sarah's sprite index and we're going to say move towards point and this is going to be obj baldrick.x and obj baldrick.y with a speed of 1. Now we're using this function this time because this attack just needs to move at him. And I want it to move kind of in a diagonal direction, doesn't need to be straight or down the whole time. And it doesn't have a mask index, so it's not going to get stuck on any collisions. Now we have to be sure to use this function inside of the width because otherwise the thing that's going to move towards the point is going to be our cutscene object, which is not what we want to do. And we're going to check to see the collision inside of this width still. So if collision circle x, y with a radius of 16, and the object that we're looking for is Baldrick, and we're going to say precise, false, and not me, true. So if we run into Baldrick, we are going to destroy ourselves and we're going to audio stop sound the electricity. 
And then, this part's tricky at first. We want to increase the current step, but we are still inside of the attack object. And the attack object does not have a current step variable. All it has is the image speed being set when it's made. So the other keyword we need to use now is called other. And this is extremely important. Uh, it allows you to access the other thing that you are working with. So we have with attack, and other is going to reference this cutscene here. But we can't have the plus plus right there. We have to put it on the outside here. So we are increasing other current step, which is the cutscene step, which is great. That's what we want. Now, if keyboard check. Now make sure these parentheses are right. So are these uh, brackets. So we are outside of the attack. So if keyboard check pressed ord, we're going to say a, just arbitrarily a. We're going to say they completed the quick time event. And we're going to say, say audio stop sound, sound electricity. And we're going to say current step is equal to 15. We are going to jump forward to a step because if they succeed, we want it to be different. If they fail, then we're going to move on to the next step. Okay. And now to draw, to let the player know that they need to press A, we're going to come on to the draw event again. We're going to put in case 10 because that's where we are. And we're just going to draw that text form. Nothing too fancy. It's just going to be, we're going to draw it right above Baldrick's head. So dot X minus 75 and OBJ Baldrick dot Y minus 55 because it needs to move over to the left so that it fits on the screen completely. And we're just going to say press A to dodge. And put break. And I will make sure to put quotation marks right there. And if we do that, let's go ahead and run it. And let's take a look at everything we've accomplished so far and make sure that everything's working. When we pressed A, we can see that we went to current step 15, so we went to where we're supposed to. We haven't said what for these guys to happen yet and the electric attack just disappeared off the screen because we didn't destroy it. That's something we'll do in step 15. But that's all I want to cover in this part. We covered a lot. We are about halfway through, actually probably about three quarters of the way through this whole cutscene. So if you've stuck with me so far, that's awesome. I hope that you are learning. If you have questions, if you run into problems, leave comments below. This project, all the assets, remember, are in the description below so you can access them and download them to follow along or just dissect it on your own. I hope that is helpful. I hope you are enjoying this. And that's all I've got for you in this part. So thank you for joining me. As always, have fun making great games, and I will talk to you later. If you'd like to support me in making these game dev tutorials, consider sponsoring me on Patreon. The awesome people currently supporting me are on the screen, and they get cool benefits like one-on-one -on -one training sessions, early access to videos, and more. Check it out in the link below, or visit patreon.com slash beyondusgames.